Welcome to How to Yu-Gi-Oh! Let's explain Rarity Collection. 1. Why was this set released? 2. Konami's plans. 3. Conclusion. 1. Why was this set released? Okay, so I'm going to be now talking about what I feel is my, uh, you know, opinion, and obviously with the facts presented to me, about why this set was released. As you know, this year for Konami, it's not been a really good year in, in terms of growth. I think we, there was a shareholders meeting, you know, this year. It was been said that the growth of Yu-Gi-Oh has not been so good as Master Duel hasn't really helped. And I'm sure they knew about Lorcana coming into the game and things like that. Maybe really strong and maybe good on the front in the sense of like, you know, it's a veteran and it's, it's one of the old card games that has existed. But being old is not enough. And while in the Asian scene, in the continent of Asia, Yu-Gi-Oh is growing and is king on the Western side, it's not really so good in Europe and America. Um, the growth is much smaller, I would feel, than Pokemon and Magic the Gathering. And so I believe that this set was released to sort of stop the bleeding, rather, and try and bring new players into the game. But I also feel this is a big game changer for Konami and change the narrative that Yu-Gi-Oh has. Because the narrative that Yu-Gi-Oh has amongst players in general is that it's quite expensive to enter the game and it's com and it's comparable to flesh and blood. That reputation and that is not really good to have. So I think this set, Rarity Collection, really does um, change the, the ball game and really does change things for Yu-Gi-Oh going forward. And I feel also that with this set's release, and we can see that there's a number on it, this implies, this does not only imply, but this tells us, this is going to be a, something that's going to be happening in the future time and time again. Be happening every November. So it's really, really good, fantastic, and we will see how this set shapes up in the future. 2. Konami's Plans So... What are the plans for Yu-Gi-Oh? Well, Konami has had plans. And I think part of us as in the in the, in the Yu-Gi-Oh community have been obviously been saying that as a business, you know, Konami doesn't care for us. Konami, the Yu-Gi-Oh card game has not really been doing anything. But, Facts. But I say it isn't true. I say that they have been caring for us. Highly unlikely. It's just in their own way. Otherwise, we wouldn't have the game in Asia, the Asian continent, grow so rapidly. This isn't that Konami doesn't care for the game. They don't care for it on the Western side of things. I can't deny that. It's just the truth at this point. But they have listened to feedback, and they have taken it on board. Let me list uh, some actual tangible examples of how this has taken place. For example, there's been a huge complaint about the fact that there's a lot of negating cards in Yu-Gi-Oh! And I feel this happened at the start of 2020 during lockdown, Konami's greatest time to change their image and to address all these concerns that players and just general audience have had for the game. One of these things that they addressed was negation. And so in 2020, they banned every single card that basically said, you cannot play. Any card that has this wording or effect that says that you cannot activate, notice it is banned and does not exist in, you, in both TCG and OCG. They are all banned. And any new card that has a similar effect or says that you cannot activate is locked to an archetype and cannot be spread by other means. Even though this year we do have another card in Vader that came out in Age of Overlord that allows you to skip your opponent's turn. But however, it's impossible to make and it is not realistic and, it, and it's just basically a gimmick. So yeah, they have, stuck, they have listened to this feedback and you will, and 
while you think what I'm saying is complete garbage, it is facts. Facts have proven themselves. Since 2020, since the pandemic, we have not received any negation card in any set that is generic. They have listened to that feedback and have put it on board. Any generic negate has not been printed. Because one of the biggest complaints we've had as a community that we've been saying is that stop printing generic negates. And if you are printing generic negates, put some kind of cost to them. And indeed, that is the case. Our second point is going second. Now, a lot of uh, players have said, and the community has said at large, that going second in Yu-Gi-Oh! is really difficult because we have barely have any cards to go second with and most of the time going second is a fruitless advent uh, adventure Th we've seen this this improvement and, ra and radicalization of going second cards since even i think three years before 2020 we've seen the introduction of imperm evenly matched lightning storm Dark Ruler No More, and more. Such similar cards. And in fact, with this year, we have the premiere of one of the best going second cards in this game's history, in my opinion, Triple Tactics Thrust. And anyways, the point is, is that we have loads of going second cards in Yu-Gi-Oh! now. So to say that there's no going second cards in Yu-Gi-Oh! is practically is demeaning. I think we do have a lot of them. But I think we come to the third point, and one of the things that Karami's addressed this year and looks to be a permanent feature is this set itself, Rarity Collection. Um, because before this set, generally in the TCG, OCG didn't apply. But in TCG, getting yourself tournament staples or you know, meta-defining staples was practically impossible. You'd have to wait a year, You'd have to wait a year later. And even at that point, you would only have to, you would only get the archetype staples of the previous year. An example of this, we can expect next year to get the cards SP Little Knight, the Chaos Angel, and the Bestial Desparta, and the Diabell Star, all for a cheap price in the negatives, as they'll be reprinted to High Heaven. However, we have to wait a year for this. Um... And all other meta-relevant cards would not be available. However, with Rarity Collection that came out quite recently, and seeing that it has a set code of 1, RA, RA01, whatever it is, that has changed everything. This essentially means now that going forward, we're going to having meta-staples for reprinted. We've seen this year a card like Baron de Fleur, start at, at three digits and go to single digits. It's absolutely insane and it's Yu-Gi-Oh! history right now that we're seeing in the making. The fact that we can have a meta-defining card go from three digits to a single digit in price is absolutely amazing. Tanking the price and that we're seeing this with countless meta-staples this, you know, with the release of Rarity Collection. So it is absolutely wonderful. Anyways, this has been a huge, huge um, indicator of positive things to come. And now, the fourth thing I would say, but this is something that needs to be solved, is when it comes to the layout of a Yu-Gi-Oh card. For example, let's look in front of you, and you can see I have a layout of how a card is now, and I have the Rush Duel layout. And all we've done is, we have the effects on these cards. These cards are exactly the same. The cards, as you can see in front of you, are Dark Rebellion XYZ Dragon. Look at the layout of a usual Yu-Gi-Oh card on your left, and then look at it if we use the Rush Duel layout on your right. Look at the difference. Which card are you likely to look at, and which is easier to understand? More often than not, you're going to point to your right. Because one, the layout is really nice. It's clear and concise where everything is, and it just it makes everything pop. And indeed, in my opinion, right, Yu-Gi-Oh! has a layout problem. It's not about the amount of text on the card. 
It's about how you present that information. Presentation is king. You know, if you present your information in a in a unique and appealing way, no matter how much text is on a card, it is going to not be so confusing. And I feel that is the problem. Yu-Gi-Oh's charm is its difficulty. But the issue that it has had for a long time, I feel, is that the information and how it is presented on cards is extremely backwards and it hasn't been improved and that needs some improvement and obviously we've seen that in rush Duels, and this is a separate game another type of game in Yu-Gi-Oh! but you get my general idea is that this is something i hope that we can see improve maybe next uh, next year i would say would be the layout of cards even if we could follow the ocg system of having bullet points on a card because in the OCG, they have bullet points on their cards to show the how the effects work, differentiating different types of effects would make understanding Yu-Gi-Oh cards much easier. I think part of the reason why we're not getting new players into this game is because Yu-Gi-Oh is complicated simply because of how the information is presented. Present the information in a clear and concise way, then the game will no longer be complicated. Complication comes from presenting your work in a complete and utter mess. The fact that you go in the Guinness Book of Records with the pendulum magical with the pendu- with the pendulum monster Endymion, right? That end the Endymion pendulum is in the Guinness Book of Records of having the most text on a playing card is not good. It is not good at all. This is not bring uh, new players in, and especially when they see we have that kind of record. That is that isn't great. We need to. It's but in my opinion, again, as I'm saying heavily, it is not about what is on the card, but how you present the card. Presentation is king. Um, that's all I've got to say about this. Three. Conclusion. Okay, so let's get to my conclusion. Now, if we look at Yu-Gi-Oh! this year, there's been a lot of changes. Changes which we've not had in this game's history. Um, We've had the most sets we've had this year. And granted, I've not kept up with every single set in this year. I've not posted it on my channel because I've just felt that, you know... It's it's pointless. It's not worth it. But while others may see, while it is true that might be seen as a mistake, I see it as an opportunity. In fact, this year we've seen change from Konami. We've seen change and then some realization that things need to change. An actual change taking place. Right? Maybe it is a bad thing that sets are not there to breathe. Maybe... You know, with all the bad things that have been happening, that mistakes that have been making, that it seems that Krami is not in a good place. But in my opinion, I would I would flip it, because I would think it is in a good, it is in a better place now than before, because there's one big major difference: they are listening as a company. They are actually doing some big changes and actually taking action for many years they have not taken this drastic action as they have in this year you know the fact that we've seen uh card prices slash for meta staples the fact that you know we have archetypes any archetype that you can play is it true that sets have not had time to breathe absolutely but I think, you know, there is always a give and take. They've given us loads of archetypes to play this year. So there have been loads, lots and lots of interesting archetypes this year. We've had, uh, we've ended the year with, you know, our meta scene that is changed in Yu-Gi-Oh's history. And we have 15 to 20 decks. Is We only have one archetype in the game that is exp uh, that is expensive, which is dear Bell Star, right? Uh, possibly two, which is sinful spoil. 
Whereas previous years we had so many things expensive still by the end of the year, including Meta Staples. You look at the results right now and the results for Yu-Gi-Oh! are fantastic at the end of this year. We've ended this year with a historic set, price, a big huge price slash across the board, right? For casual players, for anyone entering this game, this is a great achievement. This is a great moment for Yu-Gi-Oh! Have we had bumps along the way this year? Absolutely. We've ma they've made a ton of mistakes. But I'd rather have Konami be like this than the year previously or how they've been before, where there's no action where they do not listen to the customer base that is us, and they basically have done absolutely nothing. At least I know that next year we could see some more changes. And seeing that the changes here didn't work, maybe, it is not about maybes here, but possibly we can see that, hmm, what set didn't sell, what set did sell, what is needed, what is not needed. Money talks, and we can see that our, not just money talks, but the sets that people are talking about will be emphasized more. The usual core sets, Battles of Legends sets, which have not really had anything. We've had ghosts in the past set, which have had ghosts for sure, side sets as well, and the Megatins. And then we have had Rarity Collection, which is a new thing. Uh, you know, the Maze, a new addition to the set lineup, which is the Maze Collection. I think this is the first premiere. So have we had a lot of sets this year? Yeah. But it is better to have a lot of things and change and innovation and also what I like to call mistakes. This is how improving starts. It's about making mistakes. It's about realizing that things need to change. And sometimes along this difficult journey, things won't work. Um, this year... There's some things that have worked with, I believe, Rarity Collection, I think, is the thing that has really, really worked. And I hope and I think that should stay. And I think Konami will definitely keep that. But there's a lot of flack. There's a lot of uh, nonsense that needs to go. Do we need to keep core sets? Absolutely. Do we need to keep side sets? Absolutely. I feel it should be streamlined to just i think hopefully in the future next year it will be streamlined looking at it to core sets side sets a mega tin and rarity collection and i believe that is enough do we need battles of legend sets usually we do need battles of legend sets to reprint the meta staples but i think with rarity collection existing a lot of battles of legend sets are not really needed the maze uh, sets are not needed anymore because these are extra sets that we've had these this year or usually years prior have been there to reprint meta staples since they're not reprinted in the uh, mega tins, right? But because we have rarity collection, this is a huge bomb and everything changes, which means for most players, there's going to be no reason why you would play with those sets and i think i'll get those sets that's it really we come to the end of this video so as i like to say you are one step closer to becoming a Yu-Gi-Oh master my faith right is in your hands <laughs>